the MGM Plus hit series from returns with a brand new season. My family is trapped in a terrifying place. From executive producers of Lost. This place will not break us. Nothing that I've been through is possible. Why can't they leave us alone? The only way we go home is together. From new season. Watch now only on MGM Plus. This is Scams and Cons News with Jim Grinstead. In this week's news, con artists are preying on people released from jail, telling them that there are expenses that must be paid. And scammers are scamming scam victims with promises of getting their money back. But we begin with a group of Karens in California. Along the shores of Malibu, a group of homeowners have been placing private property signs along the beach outside their homes. The signs say trespassers will be prosecuted. It's an empty claim because the California Coastal Commission says oceanfront land is public property. Our AI voice, Tamika, reads from an article on the SFGate website. This is only the latest example of ongoing fights between owners of Malibu's multi-million dollar beachfront homes and beach visitors in the upscale coastal community of Los Angeles. Confrontations like these have become part of a broader pattern in California of wealthy homeowners living near California's popular hikes, beaches, and other natural attractions taking matters into their own hands to limit visitors. Last year, the California Coastal Commission penalized homeowners in Malibu who had spent the better part of four decades obscuring access to Escondido Beach. And in a separate incident posted to TikTok, a woman can be seen angrily roping off an area of Laguna Beach in front of her home and yelling at beachgoers to leave. Earlier, the city of Malibu was accused of removing signs posted by the Coastal Commission The signs directed people to areas that were difficult to find and which had great views or interesting rock formations. Malibu said the Coastal Commission did not have permission to install the signs. The signs were not on Beach Commission land. It was a big gamble, and it didn't pay off for some con artists who tried to rip off Sam's Town Casino in Las Vegas. The setup was for someone impersonating one of the casino's lawyers to contact an employee. The employee took the bait and delivered $750,000 to a location in North Las Vegas where a UPS driver and the fake lawyer were waiting for the payment. She handed over the money, then went back to the casino. The more she thought about it, the more she thought she'd been scammed, so she told a supervisor. One woman was arrested in connection with the crime, and as of this writing, she had not yet been arraigned. Several similar incidents have targeted Vegas casinos over the past several years. An Arizona company was fined $5.2 million for promising scam victims they could get their money back. The Federal Trade Commission levied the fine. The scammers sold kits priced at $499 and targeted people who fell for work-at-home schemes. Mexico's drug cartels are diversifying. They're now targeting timeshare owners and they're doing in-depth research on the targets to pull it off. WGAL in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, explains how it works. It begins with the scammer contacting a potential victim and pretending to be a broker or a salesperson. They know a lot about the property. The victim is then presented with the option of exiting the timeshare, but they have to pay taxes and fees up front. The second step, that involves the scammers posing as someone from a law firm that wants to help the victim recover some of the money they already lost in that first phase. At this point, they're asked to pay legal fees. And in the third and final phase, the con artists are now posing as a member of a government agency like the Mexican government's Financial Intelligence Unit, or Interpol. The Mexican cartels are drawn to these timeshare scams, according to the FBI, because of the low overhead involved in setting up the operation and the lack of attention it receives compared to drugs or weapon schemes. This is Scams and Cons News. This episode is brought to you by Buzzballs. 
Meet Buzz Balls, a unique round ball can that is filled with delicious real fruit juice and cream cocktails. There is nothing cooler than these new ball-shaped cocktails that are perfect for every occasion. Grab a refreshing gluten-free Buzz Balls for your party, festival, or just relaxing with friends. Buzz Ball, let the good times roll. Buzz Balls, 15% ABV, Carrollton, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. A city near Boise, Idaho will get nearly all its money back after being hit by scammers. The city of Gooding lost nearly $1 million, KTVB reported. The FBI investigated after scammers stole money intended for the city's wastewater project. The city's attorney says they pretended to be representatives of the contractor targeting employees. The money that we ultimately would have had to replace it with would have just been financed over the life of the project. But not having to do that, we're in a much better situation. The city has since added protocols and training to help prevent another scam. Sometimes it just doesn't pay off to help your fellow human being. Let me tell you about a scam being run in Toronto. In a busy area of the city, a fake taxi and driver are parked. A fake customer is outside the cab. The fake cabbie says he won't take cash, and his credit card machine isn't working. The passenger asks the passerby if their debit card can be used in exchange for the cash that was intended for the cabbie. The sucker inserts the card, enters the PIN number, and the transaction goes through. The cabbie then hands the sucker a card similar to the one used for the transaction. The cabbie now has the real card and PIN number, so the bank account can be quickly cleaned out. If you're someone who's concerned about artificial intelligence, that's AI, then you're not going to like this. Scammers are putting up small, fake cell towers that automatically connect to telephones in the area. They are small enough to fit into cars or even backpacks. The idea is to blast text messages to you and those around you, then disappear. Fox 59 in Indianapolis lays it out. There have been some reports of scammers walking around with them in their backpack. So if you're close to it, your phone might automatically connect to it instead of your Verizon or AT&T or whatever you're on. If that happens, you can be in trouble because the signal from the SMS blaster bypasses all the security that your network uses to filter out spam calls and texts. So the bad guys at that point can just blast you with as many messages as they want as long as you're connected to their signal. And of course, that's how they often get people to click on bad links or upload malware to devices. As far as protecting yourself, there is good news, but also bad news. SMS blasters use the mostly obsolete 2G network. Remember that? Carriers don't even use it anymore, but it's still out there and phones can still connect to it if there's a signal. Google says Android users can go into their settings and disable 2G on their phones. And if you do that, you're safe from the device. You're good. Your phone won't connect to it. However, there's currently no way to disable 2G on the iPhone without putting it into lockdown mode. So iPhone users could be more at risk from these devices right now. You may have heard the phrase pig butchering. It's a scam, and it's much like a romance scam. They build a relationship with someone, usually online, then take all their money. Text messages are a common way to build the relationship, but the Wall Street Journal says many of the people who are sending those text messages are victims themselves. Felice Solomon is a journalist based in Southeast Asia. We started seeing reports out of places like Cambodia and Myanmar where uh, people had been escaping from these mysterious compounds that we always sort of thought were associated uh, mostly with casinos. But they were coming out with these really strange stories that they had been uh, held captive and abused and forced to carry out illegal work like scams. The stories only got more intense, and Solomon told NPR that she focused some of her reporting on one person. Billy had a really powerful story. I met him in Thailand early this year, uh, shortly after he had gotten out of a scam compound in Myanmar, just across the border. And when we met, he had wounds on his body. He visibly was very traumatized. Uh, What had happened to him was still really, really fresh. And he also speaks really good English, so he was able to tell his story in a really powerful way. And what happened to him was really emblematic of what has happened to many, many other people who have been caught up in this. He was tricked by a recruiter online into taking what he thought 
was a legitimate job. Uh, he then went to Bangkok and was met by someone who said they represented a, a legitimate company, who then took him to uh, the Myanmar border, snuck him across, and he ended up enslaved there for about 16 months between there and, and other scam compounds. Yeah, his captors had him posing as a woman, a rich woman from Singapore named Alicia. He had a script, he had photos, he had videos to scam hundreds of victims. That's right. So once he had arrived in one of these scam compounds, he was trained. He was given uh, laptops and mobile phones that were loaded up with pictures, videos, and a PDF that had a script. It told him everything that he should say to engage with victims. Uh, how to convince them that they should invest their money, uh, what exact words to use, how to calm them down if they started to feel nervous about what was happening. It was a whole package that had been prepared for him and other scammers that just walked them through all the steps of a scam. And how much money is to be made here? Like, how much money are people giving? It depends. Some people lose a little bit of money and some people lose a lot. I have also interviewed one man who lost his entire life savings. It was more than $715,000 in the course of about two months engaging with a scammer. But we've heard everything from a few hundred to a few thousand to a million or so. Solomon says the call centers are built on an industrialized scale and need hundreds of workers. Well, what we know is that the places where these scam centers operate are run by well-known Chinese fugitives. There are a few of them. Most of them uh, are already on U.S. sanctions lists and are wanted in China. But they've sort of found a place for themselves in lawless parts of Southeast Asia, for instance, in uh, the borderlands of Myanmar and in parts of Cambodia. These are just places where it's really hard for law enforcement to reach them. And they're just kind of lawless areas. Police are trying to crack down on the problem, but the captives' families often pay a ransom for their release. At the buffet, the sliced prime rib may look delicious. The banana cream pie will definitely be on your tray, and probably some salad so you don't feel as guilty. But it's the Porsche that sucks you in. That'll be a must-have, even if it doesn't fit on the tray. A couple of guys in Louisville, Kentucky, ran such a buffet, but the cars were sold only at night and never existed. Prosecutors say the brothers and their co-conspirators stole $6 million from luxury car dealers all around the country. They've been sentenced to about four years in jail. The scammers overseas began the con by contacting dealers of high-end cars in the United States. They told the dealers they were interested in buying vehicles costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. The dealers provided photos of the cars, their titles, and vehicle identification numbers. Using that information, the scammers pretended to be dealers themselves and contacted other U.S. car dealers trying to sell the cars. When a sale was made, the money was sent to a U.S. bank account created by the brothers, then was transferred overseas for laundering. Prosecutors say seven dealers were taken in and lost $6 million to overseas accounts. This is Scams and Cons News.